Hello, welcome back modelers to Ellenwood Modeling Channel. Um, the railway modeling is, is what I'm into, so we're going to be looking more at that today, looking at how we control points. Currently I'm going through the DCC system that controls the locos, and um, my fingers are a bit fat, a little clumsy, and we're having problems with them actually uh, switching the points in time by the time the loco gets there, and hence we're having new relevance. So we will, um, we'll look at the problem and then we'll come back and we'll look at a solution. Digitrax, the DCS51 controller. This is my train controller here. We have forward, reverse, brake, loco select. Now to operate a switch, I have to remember, say, I haven't drawn on my control panel over here, which you can't see. So I want to control switch 83. I've got to get out of loco, I've got to go into switch 83 and then throw the switch and you can hear the, the, the turn out changing in the background there. To control the loco I've got to go exit loco 03 and continue controlling speed and everything else that I want with it. Well, the logo is going to take off then. All right, so that's the problem. It's a, it's a multi-step thing that I'm trying to, to eliminate here. I want to be able to just push a button and the switch operates. So that's what we're going to look at. Okay, Okay. so let's have a look at the solution. Um, the solution is the DCC Con Concepts Cobalt Alpha system. So what this is, it's a series of push button switches that sends a signal to a encoder that encoder is passed through its own DC bus wires down to the actual cobalt digital motors. Now we've looked at the cobalt digital IP motors before, that's these here. Um, if you want to know about installing those or wiring them up, see my previous videos. So I'm going to take that out of the system for now, okay? So that's cool. That's already in the layer. That's not part of this equation. What do we have left? Okay, we have our push button switches. They come in a pack of 12. You need, as a bare minimum, two switches per set of cobalt motors. So if you've got a single cobalt motor just changing from one track to another, then you've got two switches. If you've got a turnout, they say you need three switches, one to illuminate which line. So what are these switches that I'm talking about? Okay, these are the switches here. Let's see if you can get a closer on that. It's a little push button switch with its own little circuit board little plug-in connector on the back there. Push it, sends a signal to the encoder. What's the encoder? Okay, this here is the Cobalt Alpha encoder. What this does, this takes the signal from your Cobalt Alpha switch here, just as a little circuit board. That wires into there, so it takes the signal from the switch, converts it to a DCC encoded signal, and then from there, it passes from that to what we call your sniffer. Now, it has the capacity to work through your, con your main DCC controller. I've decided to put mine on a totally separate system. That way, if I have any problems with point motors not working, points not closing, I'm only looking at a simple wiring system. So this sniffer here is, connects to that, and from there, two bus wires go out to your point motors. A few other ancillaries you need. You need some way of communicating this with that. So you have a cable here with an RJ12 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention that a little later when we come to connecting it up. You're going to need a regulated 12 volt power supply, wire regulated so you don't blow up your electronics. This is a 1.5 amp one and this will provide power to these units here. So I've got a single plug. You need three, three wire ribbon wire. This connects your cobalt alpha to your cobalt encoder. This cable connects your cobalt encoder to your DCC sniffer. Okay, so let's open these up and have a little closer look at how they actually work. Okay, so the first component we're gonna look at is the cobalt alpha switches. Like I said, they come in a pack of 12. These are our little switches here. So oh, these are our little switches, they come in a pack of 12. You have 12 switches, you have 12 little surrounds just to make your you know, control board look a little neat. And then you have the controller. Just get this out. Underneath the controller is the wires that these go between your switch 
but these are the wires. These go between your switch and the input on the Cobalt Alpha switch board. Okay? Here's one I prepared earlier. I've always wanted to say that. So this is how you wire up your Cobalt Alpha switch panel. These are your push button switches. That's just a plug and play, so that pushes in. Your switch, two switches per motor. So remember, two switches per motor. So the signal from the switch goes down to this input here. This is, again, it's a plug and play. What you have to remember, I can show you on here if it will focus. There is only one way in that these plugs should go because the pins aren't central. They're offset to one side. I don't, no, I don't think it's got to pick it up there. So what that means is that if you put it upside down, your system's not going to work. So make sure you've orientated these right. Same with the other end of the switch, doesn't matter which way around they go, you need to make sure this end is orientated right to go into your switch here. Okay, so you plug all your switches in, into here. You notice these are all plugged in the same way. This is providing DC input, so this powers your actual board, so you need two wires to come in here. You can piggyback another board alongside if you wanted to. If you wanted to have two boards, then you can, this power input here is from this input here, so you can piggyback them together. And you can do that ultimately however many you like, really. From here, remember your three, your three wire, ribbon wire. Cut a length off, screw terminals here. And these screw terminals go into the terminals on your Cobalt Alpha encoder. So, signal from the button in through the electronics, signal out. Got it? The Cobalt Alpha switch, one board controls six motors, or six addresses. These are your inputs, so you've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve inputs. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six outputs. So the outputs go to the encoder. Okay, so we're going to put this aside for now. That's how this part works. So I'm going to look at the Cobalt encoder. This is the Cobalt encoder here. Components of this, you can see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six inputs here, six inputs here. So this will control our 12 addresses. Not 12 points, 12 addresses. You have to remember, if you've got two points for the same address, it's still counted as, as one address here. The turnouts and things like that. Okay, so how does this connect up? Pretty simply, the wires from your Cobalt Alpha just literally plug into there. So these are similar to what they were. They're just a lever terminal that you, you lift up, insert your wire, and it's retained. So you lift it up, you insert the wire, and it's retained like that. Okay, we'll connect it up like that. So, we now have a signal coming from the wire into our cobalt encoder. How does it get to the points? So from the cobalt encoder, we need our sniffer. So this is our sniffer here. If you notice on the cobalt encoder, here we have an RJ12 plug. That's where this cable comes in. Cable goes from your RJ12 plug and it plugs into the RJ12 socket of your sniffer. So what does this sniffer do? Why is it called a sniffer? I have no idea why they called it a sniffer, but that's what it is. The Cobalt Alpha Sniffer. What this does is take the signal from your encoder down the wire into the sniffer. What this does is it sends that switch signal from the sniffer via two bus wires that come out of here to your actual point motor to operate the point. So now the whole thing is encoded. As soon as you push that, that button switch on your cable alpha switch, it will go through the system, coming in to do bus wires to power your point motor. Okay. One word of warning. Um, what is frustrating and why they did it, I have no idea. If you read the instructions that come with all of your equipment, you will note something. 
You'll note that on the cobalt encoder panel, the instructions that come with that just say to use what's called a 6P6C cable. Now what that is, that means that the cable in here, the adapter, the RJ12 adapter has six wires and has six pins. What it doesn't tell you is that you cannot use just any old 6P6C cable. If you went and got a cable from a telecommunications place and said I need a 6P6C cable, you plug it into here, it won't work. If, let's have a closer look at this cable and you'll see why. What they have done is they have wired this end, for want of a better term, upside down. So if you traced your cable, notice, okay, trace my cable here, what we have is the little lever of the RJ12 plug is at the top. So if I keep that cable flat and I trace it back to the other end, you will notice that the lever for the RG12 is now on the bottom. So essentially what they've done is one adapter here needs to be upside down. So it takes the signal and it does that. Why they've done this, I have no idea. The instructions don't mention it, and you'll go out and you'll buy a cable and then you will not have the thing working. Okay, so that's that cable. Make sure that if you've got to get one made up, which is be fairly cheap, that they actually have one end upside down. You need power somewhere in the system. You need to be able to power the sniffer or the cobalt alpha and the cobalt's cobalt alpha, yep, yeah, and the switch panel. Well, I have a bit of trouble focusing there. So we went and brought from the local hobby shop a 12 volt, 1.5 amp regulated power supply. What we then did to stop us running multiple power inputs is we have modified the end of it. So we've ensured we knew which was, come on out, damn you all. Alright, so we've modified the end of it so we have three power inlets off the one transformer. That's quite fine, so there's our three power inlets. Cobalt sniffer has a power inlet. The Cobalt Alpha encoder has a power unit here. Now these are all positive in the center, negative on the outside. Don't get them mixed up, you will fry something. And then your Cobalt Alpha, so that's, that's those two. Then your Cobalt Alpha panel has screw adapters. Why they did that and not another adapter like that, who knows. But they've done that, so again you have a positive and a negative match in there. These are screw terminals, so they have to go in there and be screwed up. Okay. If you want, you can wire that up, make your own plug so the plug is together. In this instance, this is that. So what we're going to do in our next phase is we're going to make a control board. We're going to make it out of the 3mm white panel. That's going to be our surface, so we can draw track planes on there. We're going to install our switches, we're going to hook these all up and we're going to hook it up to the test bench and we're going to see if it works. So thanks for listening, stay tuned for part two. Um, I've got a little bit of work to do to go off and make the control panel. So thanks for watching, please like, comment, any hints, any questions feel free to ask. I'll, uh, I'll answer them if I know the answer. Um, but hopefully this will be a good system once it all works and uh, hopefully make it easier and a little more professional. So, again, like, subscribe, share, comment, and um, I hope you're getting something out of this. Okay, thank you.